Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video on managing DNS. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the maintenance tasks involved with managing a DNS server. This includes the management of DNS records, where we'll look at the time to live property and talk a little bit about aging and scavenging. Then we'll look at how to test a DNS server using utilities like NSLOOKUP and DNS Command. And then we'll look at how to monitor DNS performance through the performance monitor, DNS event logs, and DNS debug logging. Let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what is time to live? In the last video, we talked about caching. Well, a record's time to live value indicates how long that record should be cached by clients and other DNS servers. The default time to live for a zone is set to one hour. And typically, you would not have to adjust that time to live, but you do need to keep in mind that you may find that the time to live is set too short if DNS query traffic increases because of DNS clients frequently requesting name resolution for expired records, or the time to live may be set too long if the DNS clients are caching outdated records. So I, I, we'll look at this in just a few minutes, but again, mostly it's just kind of there. You want to know what it does, but you could run into those circumstances where it does need to be adjusted. So what is aging and scavenging? Well, the aging process allows the DNS server to determine whether a stale DNS resource record should be removed from the DNS database. And scavenging is the process of cleaning and removing the outdated or extinct names from the DNS database. Aging and scavenging helps keep the zone data current. That's the easy way to put it. It's just it's keeping everything current. Uh, the process of aging and scavenging is particularly important if the DNS environment is using dynamic updates because resource records can automatically be modified by the clients and in some cases those records won't automatically be removed when the computers are removed from the network. As a, for instance, you may have a computer that registers its own host record when it starts up so you turn on the computer and it says, hey DNS server, here I am, please put a record in your database. But then that computer gets improperly disconnected from the network and the record doesn't get deleted from the database. Well, that creates a problem because now you have a cluttered database. Every record has a timestamp along with a couple of aging and scavenging parameters. These are the no refresh interval, which is a span of time where the DNS server will not accept refresh attempts. After which there is then a refresh interval, which is a span of time where the DNS server will accept refresh attempts. Now, the defaults for both of these are seven days, okay? You can change that, but that is what the default would be. Let me see if I can go ahead and show you exactly how this works. Okay, first we have a client that goes ahead and registers its record with the DNS server. So here, June 1st, the client has said, hey, DNS server, here I am, please make a note of it. On that record, there's that timestamp. Then we have the default seven day, no refresh interval. Now this is a period of time where the DNS server is not willing to accept any refreshes on that record. Now you might be thinking, well, why? Why would you not accept a refresh on a record? It's, it's pretty much done to eliminate some of the excess traffic that's not needed. So we basically say, and in this case, seven days, it can be lengthened or shortened, but by default, for one week, hey, the record's good with me, whether it's good or not. So that takes us up to June 8th. Once we get to June 8th, seven days later, the no refresh interval has expired, and we now begin a new seven day refresh interval. Now this is a period of time where the server will now begin accepting refresh attempts. So if in that seven day period, the client does indeed refresh, well, then we go back here and we start all over again with a brand new timestamp. Of course, that timestamp would now be maybe as a, for instance, let's say June 10th, maybe that's when it happened. And then we start the whole process all over again. But if in that seven days, there is not a refresh made, then on June 15th, the entire aging process has completed and the record can now be scavenged from the database. That's how aging and scavenging works. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at time to live and the aging and scavenging parameters. 
For this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and take us into New York member one. This is a server 2008 computer that I had configured as a DNS server in the last video. So let me go ahead and connect to that now. If you're looking to follow along, you can use any server 2008 computer configured as a DNS server. All right, now that I'm logged in, I'm going to click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then select DNS to open up the DNS Manager utility. Now the first thing I would like to show you is where we can see the time to live value for our zones. So I'm going to go ahead and expand our server, expand forward lookup zones, and then click on our demo.local zone. This was just a, a make-believe zone that we created in the last video. I'm going to right-click on this zone and go to its properties. In the property sheet, I am going to click on the Start of Authority tab, the SOA tab. Now, the top portion of this tab has to do with zone transfers uh, between primary and secondary DNS servers. And this was something we spoke about in the last video. What I want you to pay attention to right now is right here where it says minimum, and then in parentheses it actually says default time to live. So the default time to live is one hour, just as I was saying a few moments ago. If we want to change that, no problem. I can change this number to anything I want, and I can change this anywhere from seconds to minutes to hours to days. So basically, this has to do with any records that are uh, given out by this DNS server for this zone. This is how we tell the other DNS servers that we're handing these records to, or the clients that we're handing these records to, how long they should keep this information in their cache. And you know, for the most part, probably aren't going to touch this a whole lot uh, unless you have a situation where there's just either too many queries taking place or you find that there's outdated records. Either way. Now down here, you'll notice it gives a specific time to live for this record. And you might be thinking, well, what's this record? This is the zone. Well, kind of make note of this window that we have right here. Because what this actually is, this is the property sheet for the start of authority record within the zone. Let me go ahead and cancel out of here. And then take you over here to the start of authority record. This is the first record in any given zone. If I right click and go to properties, you will notice that it's the exact same screen, right down to the other tabs for demo.local. That's why we see a time to live for this specific record. So let me go ahead and cancel out of there. If I want to go ahead and see the time to live for a an, another, you know, let's say a host record, I go into its properties, and again, right down here at the bottom, time to live. Zero days, one hour, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Now, one quick little side note you should notice. Up here under the View menu, I have Advanced selected. If I take away the Advanced view so there's no more checkbox there, and, and then I go into the Property Sheet, it won't be there. The time to live won't show up. So that's something that I want you to keep in mind if you're trying to follow along. So that's pretty much time to live that's there's not a whole lot more to it so let's go ahead and look at the aging and scavenging process what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click on my server New York member one and right here you'll see there is a a setting for set aging and scavenging for all zones so if I want to set up the aging and scavenging for all zones I do it here and when I open up this window you'll notice the box is not checked by default I would check the box if I wanted to enable this, and then I would go ahead and set up my no refresh and my refresh interval. Again, the default being seven days for each. Let me go ahead and back out of there. If I expand my forward lookup zones and go to demo.local and right click, this time I'm going to go down to the properties. You'll notice on the general tab, right here we have to set aging and scavenging properties, click aging. So I'm going to click the button. And here again, not checked by default. I would check to check the box if I wanted to enable it for this zone. No refresh interval, refresh interval. Not a whole lot more to it. Uh, about the only other thing that I would show you is uh, when you right click on New York member one, right here you can give it a command to scavenge stale resource records. This is something that you can go ahead and do to manually tell it, hey, anything that has completed the aging process, get it out of there right now. So that right there 
is the time to live and your aging and scavenging process. Now, let's talk about some tools that we use to troubleshoot the DNS server. The first thing I'd like to show you is something that can be done right here in the DNS manager utility. If you go up to your DNS server, here I have New York member one, right click and go to its properties, you will see there is a monitoring tab. Now I know monitoring is something I said we'll get into later on in the video, but this tab, and let me click on it, believe it or not, this tab is actually done for testing more than monitoring. I suppose you could call it monitoring because you can set up, as I'll show you here in just a little bit, an automatic test, so it's kind of a way of monitoring. But really, this is where we can do our real basic troubleshooting on the DNS server. What we can do here is we can choose to test a simple and or a recursive query. Now, if you're thinking from the last video where I talked about iterative and recursive queries, this is the same thing. Simple query is an iterative query. Now, I could choose to test now. Uh, before I do, I just want you to notice there's a bunch of uh, tests that were already run just a few minutes ago. I'm going to go ahead and put one more in here right now. I'm going to click test now. And boom, now you see one more came through, passed the simple query, passed the recursive query. I also could check this box to perform automatic testing every X number of seconds, minutes, or hours. And I don't know if you'd want to test every... 30 seconds as a for instance or I don't know if you would want to test every one minute that might be a little bit much but you might want to do something like testing once an hour or maybe once every 12 hours or something like that and each of those records would then show up here and you get this little mini log if you want to call it that and that way if somebody calls in complaining that name resolution is not working properly and you think it might be the DNS server you can start off right here seeing just the, the, the simplest of utilities to see if simple and recursive queries are indeed working. So let me go ahead and, and cancel out of here. The next thing I want to show you is a tool called NS Lookup. But before I show you the tool, I'd like to explain a little bit about what NS Lookup actually is. NS Lookup is a command line tool that's used to help diagnose problems within your DNS infrastructure. NS Lookup provides you the, with the ability to perform queries against your DNS server and get all kinds of detailed responses. Now this kind of information can be real, real helpful when trying to troubleshoot DNS name resolution problems. Now this tool has two modes. One's called interactive and one's called non-interactive. The non-interactive mode allows you to execute NS Lookup as a single command or or execute the command in a single step where you you actually enter NS lookup with some switches behind it now this is kinda cool because you can not only do it manually from the command prompt but you could also enter it into a batch file or a script whereas the interactive mode allows you to type commands within NS lookup and then view those results and then type some more commands to get more results yeah. You know what, let me just go ahead and take you into the tool, I'll, I'll show you how it works. Now I mentioned that NS Lookup is a command line tool, and you would think I would go open a command prompt manually to get to it, but if you're already in the DNS Manager, there's kind of a neat little trick. You can right click on your server, and you can launch NS Lookup. Once I click on that, that not only takes me into a command prompt window, but it puts me into interactive mode. Now just to show you the difference, I'm going to leave this window open. I'm going to go ahead and click on Start, Command Prompt, open up, and as you see I have the two different Command Prompt windows open here. Here I'm going to go ahead and type NS Lookup, and just hit Enter, and you'll notice that from pretty much this point down, it's identical to the window up above. So you can take your pick how you get into NS Lookup, it really doesn't matter. But anyway, let me go ahead and close that. Now that I'm in the NS, not only am I in a command prompt, but in the NS lookup utility, let me go ahead and uh, do a few queries for you. First, before I even get into those queries, let me hit question mark. When I hit question mark, check this out. Bam! <laughs> this is everything you can do with NS lookup. And I will tell you, there is, this is a very, very powerful tool. DNS administrators live by this tool. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go with something called the set type command first. I'm going to say set type equals, and I'm going to put in 
SOA for start of authority. And I'm going to hit enter. Now what that has done is that has set the type of record that I'm looking for to SOA. Next, I'm just going to simply type in a domain name. I'm going to type in globomantics.com and hit enter. And you will see here that, let's see here, globomantics.com, here we go. It shows me the primary server is New York DC1. It shows me a serial number of 317, refresh intervals of 15, 10 in one day, default time to live, one hour. Okay, so, and then, oh, and then here also is the actual IP address or the A record giving me the IP address for New York DC1. Now, before I go any further, let me go back to the DNS manager. I'm going to expand forward lookup zones. Right click on the uh, on my globalmantics.com zone properties and go to the start of authority tab. And again, you'll notice the serial number is 317317, primary server, refresh 15, 10, one day. Time to live, one hour. So everything matches with the start of authority record for globalmantics.com. If I were to now type in demo.local and hit enter, you would see here that now the primary name server is New York member one, right? That's that's me, that's, that's the one that we're working on. The serial number is 13. I don't know if you remember from when we looked at the start of authority tab, but that's what it was, 13. Again, we have our 15, 10, one day, and one hour, and then here is our A record actually for pointing out to us what the IP address is for New York member one. So as you can see, I did a query on a record and it gave me the same thing that I would find if I was going through the GUI. So let's try setting the type equal to NS for name server records. And now I'm gonna again type in globomantics.com and it shows me the two name server records are for New York DC 1 and 2, or I should say 2 and 1, and it gives me the matching A records to give me those IP addresses. If I type demo.local, you will see here that New York member 1 is the name server for demo.local. If I set the type equal to A, let's just look at A records, and then I go ahead, and this time, instead of typing in a domain, I'm going to type in a specific computer. I'm going to go ahead and say New York-mem1-2k8, which is the official name of this computer, dot globomantics.com, and hit enter. It shows me that the name, New York member one 2 k 8 globomantics.com, is the IP address of 192.168.10.100. If I were to type in New York DC 1 2K8 Globomantics.com, it shows me that that particular computer is 192.168.10.201. So NS Lookup gives you the ability to kind of research and, and query anything there is to, to look at when it comes to DNS. Now, another thing I want to show you is let me go ahead and type exit. That will take us out of the NS lookup utility. That puts us back here at a regular command prompt. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the non interactive mode. And I'm going to type in NS lookup, but instead of hitting enter, watch this, I'll hit enter. That puts me back into interactive mode. Okay, this time I'm going to hit NS lookup and not hit enter. I'm going to hit a space and then I'm going to put dash type equals let's do let's do ns let's do the name server that was easy to see space demo dot local so now i've just typed in one long command i hit enter and i get my results that shows me that demo dot local name server records for new york member one and here's the ip address for it and then it takes me out of the ns lookup utility puts me right back at a command prompt so if this was a batch file or a script of some kind then we would have been right back where we started and the next command could be executed. So that's pretty much the NS lookup command uh, from a high level overview point of view. I will tell you that there are books written just on this one command. So if DNS management is something that you are going to do as a number one priority in your job, you may want to look a little deeper into this particular command.
Now the next command I want to show you is something called DNS command. So let me go ahead and first let me, you know, I'm going to type CLS. If you've never seen this before, type CLS, but it's for clear screen. And watch this. I'm going to hit enter, and it puts us right back up at the top here, blanks out the window. A little easier to see. So the next command is called DNS command. And again, I'm going to do slash question mark. Watch this. Boom. You might remember this from the last video. Uh, there's a lot of different switches here. Uh, the one we did in the last video was this one right here, clear cache. The DNS command utility was designed with the intention of allowing us the ability to do management tasks that we otherwise might do through the GUI, uh, be able to do them from a command line. And there's a number of these tasks that are here. Uh, there's no one task in particular that is necessarily any more popular than the other. I would say clear cache is definitely one of them. Uh, I know enumerating zones is one that I've seen used a lot. Let me let me go ahead and just kind of put that one in real quick for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type DNS command slash enum zones or enumerate zones. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. See now through the GUI, I'm going to leave this on the screen for a minute. Let me go back to the to the graphic user interface to the DNS manager. See, in the DNS manager, I have the ability to look at my zones, right? Here's my forward zones, demo.local uh, and globalmantics.com. I have my reverse lookup zone of 10.168.192, which is, of course, backwards, 192.168.10. I have my conditional forwarder zone, asia.globalmantics.com. And if I went into the specifics of each of these zones, I would be able to see what type of zone it is. So as a, for instance, if I right-click on demo.local and go to its properties, we see that it's a primary. Whereas if we do the same for Global Mantics, we see that it's a secondary. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our command prompt window. This is still on the screen. And you will notice that there are, actually there's five zones that they've listed here. The first one just says dot. In the last video I explained about the root domain and that's what dot is, the root domain. And you'll notice that that particular zone that's just a cache type, meaning I don't have that. That's why it's not listed over here in the DNS manager. Uh, that's caching only. And then over here is our reverse lookup zone as a primary. Here is our Asia, which is a forwarder, right? We saw that over here under conditional forwarding. Let me move this out of the way a little bit so you can see what I'm pointing at. I'll move this down. There we go, the conditional forwarding zone of asia.globalmantics.com. We had demo.local, which up here is a forwarder, and, or not forwarder, but forward lookup zone, and globalmantics.com, which is also a forward lookup zone, but you'll notice that demo.local is listed as a primary, and globalmantics as a secondary, just as we saw in the DNS manager. So the DNS command utility is something that was designed and can be used to perform these tasks from a command prompt, and the reason why we might want to perform from a command prompt is not so that we can sit here and be keyboard junkies, which uh, for all the Unix geeks out there, you know, we, we all love the keyboard, right? Um, the, the reality is, is we do this so that we can use scripts and batch files to automate some of our management tasks. So that's a couple utilities that you can use to troubleshoot and manage your, your DNS server. Let's go ahead and take a look at performance now. I'm gonna go ahead and close the command prompt window but I'm going to leave the DNS manager open just for a moment. We're going to come back to that in just a little bit. First thing I want to show you is the performance monitor tool. I'm going to click on start, administrative tools, and right here we have a reliability and performance monitor. I'm going to open that up. Now I don't want you to worry a whole lot about how to use this tool. I'm going to go over that in another video. But what I do want you to see is right here, I'm going to click on Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor is based upon something called counters or looking at counters or performance counters. So what I want to show you, I'm going to click on the blank area here. I'm going to right click and select Add Counters. What I want to show you here is that on a DNS server, on a, on a machine that's been configured as a DNS server, let me scroll up a little bit here, there will be counters for DNS. Those counters won't be there if you're not a DNS server. Now when I expand DNS, check this out. Whew, there's a long list of counters there. And you might recognize some of these counters, like here at the end we have some zone transfer information. 
uh, secure updates, recursive querying, notify, uh, incremental zone transfer, dynamic updates, etc., etc., etc. Uh, the main thing I want to point out to you is that there are these DNS records in the performance monitor utility if you are a DNS server. So this is a tool that you can use for performance monitoring. So let's go ahead and cancel out of there. And let's go ahead and close that tool. Because the next thing I want to show you are the event logs. So what I'm going to do here is in my DNS manager, I am going to go ahead and right click on my server. And then I'm going to go down to the properties. And you'll notice here there's a tab for event logging. And this is where you can choose what events you want to log. The default is to log everything. But we could reduce that down to only errors and warnings, or maybe just errors. Or if you don't want to send any event logs at all, then just say no events. So we'll go ahead and leave that at all events. And I'm going to cancel out of there. And what I'm going to do is click on Start, Administrative Tools and go to our event viewer. In the event viewer, if I expand application and service logs, you will see there is a log for DNS server. And here we see all the entries. Now let's see if we can find something that's not looking so right. There we go, there's some errors. Let's click on one. I'm gonna double click on it. A zone transfer request for secondary zone, globalmantics.com was refused by the master DNS server, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you may recall if you were watching the last video that when we first set up globalmantics.com as a secondary zone on this server, we had not yet set up the master to allow zone transfers. So sure enough, what happened? It was refused. It generated this error. So you can see how powerful these event logs can be. So let me go ahead and close the event viewer. If I come down here to global logs and expand that, you will notice this is another location where we can see our DNS events and not have to go over to the event viewer where it's cluttered with all the other logs. This is a great way to see the, the events right here in the same utility. So that's another pretty cool, these are the same errors. If I double click on it, you'll see that's the exact same error. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's move on then back to our server properties. And the last thing I want to show you is this tab right here that says debug logging. Debug logging is really a way of creating something that's a little more in depth than the standard event logging. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and check the box that says log packets for debugging. I can get very detailed with the type of traffic that I want to keep a log of. I can decide if I want to know about incoming and or outgoing traffic traffic related to the UDP or TCP protocol. I can look at queries, transfers, updates, notifications. I can look at a packet type of whether it's request or response. You may notice there's a little bit of redundancy in certain places here, like as a, for instance, outcoming, outgoing and incoming. Well, request and response, it's not that much different. But again, it kind of comes down to how you want to look at it, how much detail you want to see in this log. Oh, by the way, here we can get into a, a little bit more detailed filtering. I want to filter by IP address. I could create a filter and say, hey, I only want to know about communication with this given IP address. And down here, I could put in the path and file name for this log. This is something that you probably wouldn't do unless, again, you were, you were specifically the DNS server manager. Uh, and even then, you probably would only do it if you had some specific set of circumstances to where you had to look for a certain kind of traffic. But it is there for you if you want to have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel and close our DNS Manager. And we'll go ahead and review what we covered in this video. In this video, we took a look at time to live and how to configure it for a zone and how to view it for a specific resource record. We talked about aging and scavenging and why we have it and how we configure it. We looked at a couple of command line tools called NSLOOKUP and DNS command. And then we took a high level overview look at how to log our DNS server with the performance monitor, our event logs, and debug logging. Well, that's it for managing DNS. I'll see you in the next video.